Okay, we're starting. Okay, hello, welcome everybody. Um, some of you have seen me, talked to me yesterday in the panel. Uh, what we're going to talk about today is CS1 versus C++. Interesting. We all have different, and we've been talking about it today. Um, so what are we going to talk about? This is the agenda, the official agenda. Oh, did you notice what you're doing now? You can follow right now this, this presentation on your smart device, and it's interactive. ZThings enables me to do things interactively, and we can experiment it as well, because if already want to try doing something different, don't do it. I'm sorry, don't talk about it, but do it. OK, let's try. OK, so uh, what are we doing about What are we talking about? We're going to talk about who are our students. How do they learn? What do they want? Then we'll ask the big question, what do we want to give them? Yechiel gave a very, very impressive talk. Why that? Is that what we want to give them? Yesterday you heard uh, Amir, myself, we talked about, I talked about a lot, Introduction to computer science, and not introduction to programming. Hmm. And, and of course, we have to ask, how can we? How should we teach them? Those are the questions that we're dealing with. OK, let's start. Who are they? Who are our students? The main students now coming into the portals of higher education are Gen Z. Gen Z, I generation. Uh, the Wi-Fi, uh, Gen Wi-Fi, post-millennials, post where millennials are Gen Y. Um, in Japan, they call them the Nido, the, the Neo uh, digital natives. I mean, each, each country might have a, but Gen Z has become the main, the main uh, name for them. Um, if just very quickly, those are the time slots. Except there's a lot of different, a lot of different. People that say, oh, it's not, it's not discrete. These aren't discrete numbers. So meaning that, oh, am I this, am I that? Uh, each one is, can be different. Some countries, it might be a bit different. For example, uh, let's take example of uh, Brazil. The end of dictatorship in Brazil was a very, very important factor in the new generation coming in. So there's, there are different influences, 9-11, whatever it might be. Um, and... It's not going. Uh huh. And of course, the new generation is called Gen Alpha. Did you know that? No. No. Okay. Good. All right. So another thing. Two points already. You guys <laughs> learned. Okay. So now next. Um, oh, see, this is not a good room. What generation are you? You can answer on your smart device. Uh huh. I'm a baby boomer, and you hear left, so I think I'm the only one now. <laughs> right? Yes? No other baby boomers? No? But you can say, oh, look. You even see, I see here, everybody sees. The here now, I made it, that everybody can see the amount of responses, how many percent. Right now, oh, I didn't answer, so I'm not there. So right now we have no Gen Zs. Hmm, probably not. Gen X and Gen Y. Excellent. Look what I can do as a lecture. Forget about C++, C Sharp. Yeah, but, uh, should we teach CS1, CS? This is a nice, cute, it's a nice thing to use. It's very easy to use. It's very simple. And it's free up to 500 users, I think. So if you have a class, uh, even our size class is Iris, uh, you can use it. OK, let's continue. So who are our students? Who are the Gen Z students? These new students are coming in. Now, even in Israel, we're getting the Gen Z. All the Atudaim are Gen Z. Um, people who are just finishing army service already hitting this and more and more. Who are they? So some of the general attributes. Uh, now what I'm presenting to you is really uh, an accumulation of a lot of different research. And different people say this. It's a generalization. Take into account with a grain, pound, whatever you want of salt. Also, what years is this? You know, people can start arguing. But these are generalizations which are important for us to understand. So what's the first one? First one, first of all, they're in the clouds. Hey, 
That's not supposed to happen. Okay, so um, see that uh, that's the problem. Okay, that's using the Z things. I don't get the full animations of PowerPoint. Okay, we'll work with it. So let's look at all of them. I don't want you to see them all, but let's talk about it. Uh, first of all, they're very tech savvy. They're extremely tech savvy. The technolo technology is in their hands. They were born with it, right? Um, they're very collaborative. They work together. They love learning. They're very money conscious. Now, especially in an Ameri American environment where uh, student debt is a very, very big issue, remember, who are their parents? Gen X, sorry, in our terms. Uh, Gen Z are derived from Gen X. So therefore, um, they're their parents. And they are still hit with a lot of student debt. And that affected how they were brought up. And these are things that we have to take into account. Um, diversity. Diversity is a very big issue now with Gen Z. They're very much, extremely, they accept the diverse much more. Multicultural, um, all different orientations. It, it's much more acceptable in relation to uh, diversity. Interesting enough, they want F2F. They want face-to-face. -face. They are interested, even though they have a tremendous amount of friends digitally, but they do want that interaction with real people, which is very important for us as educators. Th there is a very, very important thing. We'll get that to in the future, in, in a minute. Lower attention span. A lot of people talking about the eight section, eight, eight second filter. If you don't attract their attention within eight seconds, then you've lost them. You have to get their attention within the first eight seconds when we're talking about digi in the digital world. They jump, they jump between screens. And these are things that we have to really take into account. And of course, ah, you see, it's showing me all the time. So, TLDR. Don't forget TLDR. Yeah? TLDR? <laughs> who, who knows what it is? <laughs> too lazy, didn't read. Or too long, didn't read. Think about that. Hmm. Okay. But they want to make a difference. They do want to make a difference. It's in part of their social ethos. Where are they? Those are the places where they are. Hmm. Um, I'll just show you two quick graphs. Um, this is a, a couple of different studies uh, in relation to smartphone use. I could ask you, I could ask you right now, how many people here within the first hour look at their smartphone? Sorry, who doesn't? Who doesn't in the first 10, no, smartphone or normal phone? or oh, any phone. <laughs> okay, right, yeah. <laughs> in the first 10 minutes, who doesn't? Hmm, interesting. Yeah, I mean, just about. Okay. Um, exactly, that's the point. So the, what's the number of hours our students are on their devices? Tremendous amount. Like you're talking about, in general, Gen Z, over 20, 25%. 10 hours a day on a smart device? How many, how many hours are in a day? Um, I just want to show it to you in a different format. This is from a different study. Uh, Pearson did a very, very comprehensive study, very interesting one. And if you notice, there's something there very, very interesting. Look, you see? Facebook. Facebook are for the oldies. And anybody who saw that clip, the, the famous job interview clip, it's brilliant. Uh, Facebook is. That's for the, my parents. Tweets is up. Instagram, YouTube, and Snapchat. OK, let's go. So what do they want from higher education? OK, legitimate question. So we say, OK, why not? Let's see. So this is not fair. This is not fair. I might even go back to the other one. Um, 
What? Yeah, yeah, maybe. No, no, I want you to use it. Um, OK, so first of all, they want value. Somebody mentioned the client, you know, looking at the students as clients. Um, but yes, they want a high value on their return on investment. They expect transparency. They want the institution to be transparent. Don't sell me stories. Tell me the truth. They also are transparent themselves, but they expect it in return. Technology they want to see. And they, they want a higher level of personalization at the administra administrational level and at the academic level. They want service. They expect it, which causes us some interesting questions. OK. We'll see this four times. OK. <laughs> I did check it. Why is it important? Why is it important? Well, as they say in Hebrew, machpatli. What's the difference what they want? Why is it important? Yes, it is. OK, let's look. Ah, this does. Ah, has a bulleted list. Um, a lot of them say a first degree is important. They understand the, um, the need of having a college degree. OK, they, they understand. They want to. So it means we do have a good target population. But they see not just for learning. OK, let's learn history just for the sake of my knowledge base. But they're doing it. In Hebrew, we'll say al manat la asot. They're doing it to be able to do it. They want a practical degree. They care very much about academic performance. They choose what to learn according to job availability, which sometimes is not very correct because right now, maybe the best time to learn something when there's a slump. Now's the time to learn accounting because there's too many accountants. So by the time they finish, there'll be a, a more need, but they do look according to job availability. And they put in the research, peer-to-peer -peer research. They'll talk to their peers and find out, yes, no. Um, and a lot of them are already starting doing ac academic credits. Also in Israel, we are seeing more and more high school students doing academic credits. OK. The two main things, if I just summarize, retention and placement. They want to know what is the retention rate? How many students finish in the given what percentage? And do they finish in three years? Do they finish in four years? A three-year program, a four-year program. And the placement rate. What is the placement rate? Yes, you see all these advertisements. MTA will say, oh, we have a 92% placement rate. I'm just making something up. You have to, one, you have to make sure those numbers are behind it. And, but that's what's interesting. That's what they want to know, because that's how they're choosing their institutions. Um, so who are they? How do they learn? They're always learning, all the time. And they want pur uh, purposeful meaning. And look at that sentence. Continuous, multifaceted, integrated experience. Sounds good, huh? Meaning, they're using multiple devices, multiple inputs for their learning process. OK. OK. No, that's only when I use a visual like that. Um, so this is from a, a different thing of, of Pearson's. Again, that's the same type of what social media uh, platforms. But what's interesting for us also is the Gen Y students, the Gen Y people here. There is a difference between Gen Y and Gen Z. And don't forget, I'm already giving you half a promo, what we're teaching a multi-generational classes still. And that also affects us. I'm not even talking about the further adult learners. Um, these are the preferred learning tools. YouTube, in-person group activities. Gen Z has gone up Luma, uh, in, instead, uh, in comparison to Gen Y. They want the actual interaction in with lecturers, with TAs. They see the importance of it. So it's, we're going now, if we went to an extreme, everything online, MOOCs and online courses, I don't want to come to the physical campus. The Gen Z, yes, they do want that. 
And that is a very important thing to take into account when we're preparing our curricula. Um, books. <laughs> Sorry, he's not here. Books. <laughs> Calm down. Okay. Um, YouTube, preferred learning method. Okay. <coughs> From learning everywhere, anytime, that was said about the Gen, Z, Gen Y, yeah. to learning everywhere, all of the time. Interesting. Okay, let's continue. What do you want to give them? Think a minute. <laughs> a minute I don't have, I see. Okay, think for a couple of seconds. What do you want to give them? Hmm. Those people that are involved in computer science education, actually, I didn't even really say who I am, did I? Didn't really present myself. Um, I'm a lecturer in the Lever Academic Center. Um, I've been teaching computer science at the secondary and tertiary level for about 40 years, a bit over 40 years even. Very involved with the uh, high, was uh, very involved with the high school uh, matriculation program, and I've been teaching in higher education for about four, 40 years. Um, and my first language was PL1 with uh, punch cards and IBM 360. Okay, so, um, and I've been dealing with education for many years. I was also head of the science teaching department by us for a while, and I've been dealing with computer science education. Um, I received my FON in 1998, because I deal in education. Yes, FON. I'm sure everybody knows what FON is. Oh, very good. Thank you, Boris. And father of nine. And that is a lot of education. Uh -huh. And in addition, I was also a principal for school, high school for three years. OK. What are we doing with computer science education? ACM. Oh, I'm sure most people know what the ACM is, I, IEEE. We teach CS1. What is the introduction to computer course, science course? CS1, CS2. That is from the ACM. The, main, the first version came out in 2001. There was a small revision in 2008. In 2013, at the end, came out a major reversion of the curricula. Um, this is a quote from in the introduction, and the fundamental aspect of computer science is understanding the interplay between theory and practice and the essential links between them. Graduates of a computer science program need to understand how theory and practice influence each other. Okay. We're not going to talk about that right now, but that is a relevant <coughs> question. We talked about that yesterday. I just added, I added that slide this morning because of something we talked about yesterday. Um, okay. Hmm. So what are those non-technical skills? Technical, all the colleges prepare this way or that way. Yeah, we'll teach this, we'll teach that. You might do it well or pretty well, whatever. But what are the non-technical things? This is something that we I talked about in the lightning talk uh, two days ago. So there might be a couple of slides that you've seen. Um, what is a soft skill? Eh, Oxford says that. But it's more than that. Hmm. OK, quickly, because I don't have time. What soft skills do you think should be taught? You can give up to three answers on your smart device. I'm doing right now, while you're doing that, I'm doing active learning. I'm not just chalk and talk, talking, talk, talking head. Skill? What? What is a soft skill? skill? Those non-technical skills that you want your student to have. Karen was a fantastic promo for me because what she showed over and above all those technical things, she enhanced in their students a lot, a lot of different things. Think about it. What are those soft skills? And we talked about, uh, a lot of people we talked about, when you're, when you're interviewing, and this is a promo for somebody else today, when you're interviewing, what do you want from them? Right? This is uh, perfect for you. I'm just lead, it's a lead in for you. That's okay. Okay, only four responses. Come on. One more, one or two more, because I want to show you a cute thing here. Anybody else? You can write blah, blah. It makes a difference. Okay, never mind. Hmm. Okay, um, what you can get is a word cloud. 
If you do it nicely, that's all right. If you do it nicely, you can get a word cloud also, and the students can see it. And obviously, all this is saved, and they can see it afterwards. Okay, but anyway, um, Iris is giving me the funny eye. So no, 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 no. Um, okay, <laughs> no. Um, Sweebuck. Sweebuck, anybody? Okay, no. IEEE came out with the software engineering body of knowledge. They also have a curricula for the software engineering, aside from the computer science, two different things. Okay, so what were they? Um, so what, there's like 15 different bodies of knowledge. One of them, uh, number 15, is professional practice. And there's a whole long list of things. Um, okay. The four C's we all know. Cut, color, clarity, and carrots. That's in diamonds. But what are the four C's of education? Uh, it's a big thing in educational world now. They're talking about the four C's of education. Uh, very quickly, it's communication, collaboration, critical thinking, and creativity. Those are what's being, already from K-12, that's being put into the educational systems, also in Israel. And those are the key skills that are needed in the 21st century to be able to go into the to go into industry and to go into the professional world. Uh, we will not, we will not talk about all four. You can read them afterwards, because I know my time constraints. I will suggest a fifth C, because we're whole, we are in C, C++, um, char, which is character. That is also an important, the work ethic, a character, a mensch, that's also an important skill. OK, so let's just sum up very quickly. Time management, written skills, oral skills, empathy, um, <coughs> teamwork, all these, a lot of those things Karen mentioned in her, in her talk. Um, these are things that you want to give them, approachability. They have to also, accountability. You do a code review, own up to your mistakes. You have to be able to accept what's going on. Um, motivation is a very big issue. Um, our friend from uh, Serbia is not here now. Um, this is especially for him. You don't hire for skills. You hire for attitude. You can always teach skills. And this is a very, very big question with recruiters. This is one of the key questions. I, if you notice, there's a whole section here going like this. All those people who are coming from industry, which is very true. Uh, we won't do this right now. You can also just do a polling with your students. Yes, no. And then you can see, do you agree or don't agree? OK. Next. So we know what we want to teach them. We know what, who they are. How do we do it? Very quickly, in one minute, I just want to present to you uh, one model, which is called the Dell's, which is Edgar Dell from the 60s. Uh, he calls it the cone of experience. We all know that if we hear something, we retain a certain amount. If we see and hear, we'll retain more. And if we do it, we retain even more. So he has this whole theory, whatever. I'm not going to go into it. There's the whole issue of lots and hots, low order thinking skills and high order thinking skills. But if I want to just, for us, as an executive summary, we could talk about tell, show, and do. So when we're teaching our CS program, we also want to get to the do, and we do that. And that's very important. Um, OK. Everybody's heard about the sage on the stage, blah, 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 moving towards the guide on the side. OK. Um, where sage on the stage was teacher-centered, where everything's based on the lecturer who's the source of knowledge. And I'm passing it on to you. I'm sitting on my podium. I'm sitting in the lecture room. The way that we're sitting now is only because of historical reasons. Maybe this is not the efficient way. And we're now much more student-centered. It doesn't mean there's no place for the teacher. And that's one of the big critical questions is, what is the place of the instructor in higher education in the 21st century, where I can learn from some Indian uh, C++ programming with his funny uh, accent? I can learn the knowledge. I can learn in a lot of different places. I can go to Karen's. Uh, website and see great lectures from her. My lecture maybe is not as good, so I'll go somewhere else. 
But so what is the added value of the lecturer? Um, so what are the different methods? We talked about, I know, I know. Um, active learning, problem-based learning. <coughs> you have to help them with retrieval, retrie retrieval, because fake news, what's good, what's bad? They need to learn that in their environment of the higher education, how do you find relevant and correct material? Engage creativity. Again, this is just, now it's going to be very highlights. Harness the entrepreneurial streak. Make connections. Uh, one thing that we did talk about yesterday, and I'm reinforcing it, is the idea, the concept of formative of, uh, assessment. Students have no problems that you monitor them. There's no privacy issues from their point of view. I want you to. It's the grades that's important. Use learning analytics. Use your LMS. Use your Moodle. Yeah, there's a tremendous amount of information there. Over and above, oh, I didn't know there was an exercise to hand in. And then you go like this to him. Sorry, I got something in my eye. Because I saw that in Moodle that you accessed it last week, the exercise. So don't, you know, give me a story. Peer assessment, self-assessment. The assessment doesn't have to be, be done by me. Automatic uh, programming uh, things, like we talked about. OK. Um, yeah, OK. Um, how do we do it? Competency-based learning. Vine. Does anybody know who Vine, what Vine is? Or was? Was. Just so you should know, they're coming out now with Byte, which was going to be Vine 2.0. To make a vine. Me as an instructor, I have to know what's going on in the technological world of my students. I don't want to be that old, old professor. I'm old, yes. But I want to talk to them in their language, in their language. OK. Show, not tell. OK. We're finishing. The how. Teachers are very important to learning and development. Don't underestimate the value of the mentor, of the, le the lecturer as a mentor. It begins with work ethic that you come on time, and you finish on time, um, to your lecture. <laughs> OK, I'm finishing. Let's sum up the challenges. OK, sum up. Oh, it's a good, good key word. I put it in the min middle deliberately. <laughs> OK. <laughs> um, keeping online information safe. OK, what else? Um, oh, wow, you didn't see them all. Uh, there's a lot of different things that we have to think about. Um, multi generational campuses. And one other important thing, learning spaces. The institutions have to change their learning spaces. Not simple, not trivial. OK, learn the language, language. The soft skills. OK, you all saw that. So, summary. We can do things in old ways. We can do th old things in new ways. The question is, how do we do new things in new ways? That's part of our challenge. Mm -hmm. So from higher education to higher education, that's what they want. Our students want tachlis. They want to be able to get a job after they finish, especially in our fields. So we have this very big problem between higher education and higher education, but maybe we can bring them to higher education. Mm -hmm. There are links and references just for you. Enjoy, because we have to. Questions? There's a lot of questions. A tremendous amount of questions. Answers? Not so sure. Thank you. Thank you.